Greetings to all. So good to look upon your faces. So glad to be in the Lord's house once again. Um, just grateful to be here. Um, grateful that our pastor is here. And um, give an honor to our senior pastor and founder. And short story, the first time I saw her, <laughs> I simply looked and saw her. And uh, she is in middle school, and I, and I looked over those doors, and I said, wow, look at her. And I still say wow today. That's it. And I still say wow. And, 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 and I take my time, because I didn't know it was God back then, but I, God had allowed me to see my wife. Yeah. At the age of 14, he actually allowed me to look upon my wife yeah. and, and to be here married 37 years later. Man, a husband, a father, grandfather, godfather, but to still say wow today. The God is worthy of praise and and she has so much to do why I stand before you today, because being the woman of God, she is a sanctified wife, a sanctified husband. And um I'm a living witness that uh she loves the Lord with a whole heart, mind, and soul. She has so much to do with why we're here. Because of her, her great love for God and, and his people, we find ourselves here at New Life Ministries. So I, yes. I double honor her. I honor our assistant pastor, Prophet Jones, our elder A.B., our youth pastor, our visiting elder, our business administrator, our mother, everybody under the sound of my voice. Yes. So good to see my brother Andre, Deacon Andre, yes. today as always. Everybody. Everybody, Sister V, it's good to see you again in the yes, house. And, um, everybody, everybody, Sister Vaughn, everybody, the children, everybody. And we're just grateful to be here. And um, God has a sweet, uh, it's, everything he says to me is sweet because he's God and he's always right. And I, uh, and because he's a, he allows me to hear his voice, every word he says is sweet to me. Why? Because he's right. He's always right. right. Never wrong. He can't be wrong. So anything he says to me is good for me. Yeah. And, and everything he says to his people is good for his people. That's right. And uh, we're, we're just honored to stand here. And if you have your Bibles, we're going to come from th three scriptures today. It's going to be John 3.16. Then we're going to flip over to Romans 5 and 8. And we'll... Uh, the third scripture be 1st John 3 16 so you guys you stand to your feet once again John 3 16 the gospel of John 3 16 Romans 5 and 8 and we're just going to take our time and go there together and 1st John 3 16 everybody have John 3 16 let's read for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 5 and 8 reads as follows. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And 1 John 3.16 reads as follows. Hereby perceive ye perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Remain standing. Heavenly Father, we come to Jesus Christ simply to say thank you. Thank you for this time and this place. I ask you to look upon me. Uh, keep me covered in the blood of your son Jesus and see his righteousness only. Heavenly Father, use me for your glory. You've worded my mouth to say exactly what you have told me to say. And let your word fall on the tender heart, tender receiving heart. And when your word goes forth, place understanding in their minds that only after they've heard your word, they be doers of your word and your word. Forgive me of any of my sins and deed and thought, Heavenly Father. Keep me as only you can. Yes. But above all, use me for your glory, that you will get all glory and all praise. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. Sir. Amen. <clears throat> And uh, the subject the Lord has given me today is He loved us along, along the way to lead us to the way. Wow. 
And I, and I think about this, this journey, you know, and it brought to my mind the Israelites, God's chosen people, how they were in physical bondage, slavery to the Egyptians there in Egypt, and they're in physical bondage. And, and God is concerned about all of us, every part of us. You know, so they're in physical bondage, and they're looking for a way out of this physical slavery, but they're also in the slavery of sin, spiritual bondage also. So this loving God that we serve. Now, we all just read, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we also read that while we were yet sinners, God gave us, his, Jesus died for us. You know, and what kind of, and think about that. God loves us so that while we were sinners, making us his enemy, Jesus died for us. While we, we, while we were God's enemy, his, Jesus sent his son and Jesus died for us. Yet, while we were enemies, not even concerned about who God was, not even thinking about him doing everything we could think, do, and, you know, everything we wanted to do, we did. So while we were, in, as, as sinners, we were enemies of God. We're either an enemy of God or we're his child, a servant of God. We're one, of, we're, there's no in between. So think about that. While we were enemies of God, God loved us so that he allowed his son to die for us. And, and just take your time and think about that. Would any of us go help our enemies? Would any of us sacrifice our children, allow our children to die for their enemies? No, no way. That's how much, so we're all without excuse. Nobody can say that God doesn't love us. Nobody can say that God doesn't love you. Just for that fact alone that Jesus died for the world. He loves us. And for that alone, the, Bible, the scripture says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So that scratches out that excuse of, uh, I'll come to God when I get myself together. You can't get yourself together. And, and God is not waiting for you to get yourself together to come to him. But I'm going to go all the way back to the Israelites, God's chosen people. And, and God is leading through Moses. He's leading them out of physical bondage. Now, this journey should have took about 11 days, but it ended up taking 40 years. Should have took a little over a week, but it took 40 years because of disobedience, rebellion, fear. Right? Mm -hmm. So think. What should have took a week and a half <laughs> took 40 years. And God is leading them. God has this great place to store for them. 600,000 people leave Egypt, go into this promised land. And as they taste this freedom, they, 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 this newfound freedom that they're walking into, they're looking around and, and they, they want what everybody else has. They get distracted by the things that are going on around them and they begin to want these things that are going on around. You have God, yeah. creator of heaven and earth and everything, leading you to a place that he's already prepared for you, but we want everything else around us. So, so the, some tells me things never change. We have God leading us, but we're focused on everything else around us. So I, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm talking about my journey. You know, and I'm so glad I, the Lord saved me over 20 years ago. And as I go back, at any given time, Jesus could have came back. And I still would have been at without excuse. You know, I could have been, you know, I could, there was no excuse for me not to get saved. Many times have I heard the gospel in my, in my 59 years, I was without excuse. You know, and, and, and life has its ups and downs, and, you know, you have, you have days where, why am I here? You know, we've all been there. We, we, we've had the best of days, we've had the worst of days. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean we're, we're without an excuse to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. That doesn't give us a, a way out because life has been so bad that um, we, we reject God. God is just simply waiting. Has, has anybody in here got to a point where he said, life is more than I can bear? Good, because that's just where we need to be. That's just what he wants. Now the question is, where are you gonna turn? When life is more than you can bear, to who are you gonna turn to? 
And that's the question. So these Israelites, 600,000 people leave Egypt, go on their way to the promised land, and they're distracted and they're rebelling all the way. Rebelling all, you know, and some are listening, but, but God is leading them. He loved them so much that he, he never stopped leading them. God never stopped providing for them, just like it does for us. Even in my rebellion, before I came to Christ, he kept a roof over my head. I, it wasn't something great I was doing. He provided for my wife and kids. He allowed me to provide. In my rebellion, he still took care of me. He still provided for me, even while I was neglecting him. Could care less. Doing anything I wanted to do, not thinking about him. And still reaping blessings from him. And, and, and that is still happening today. So I'm, 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 I'm taking my time because as he led me along the way, God leads us with purpose. He, God, we serve right. a God that does nothing without purpose. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I can honestly say I, I grew up, I, I'm adopted. I, my, the only mother I know is Mother Sawyer. You talking about baby born, you talking about baby born. You go home after three days, I went home after six weeks. My mother. She, she, mother Sawyer, another Sawyer, come pick me up after six weeks, and that's where I spent my life, being a child. So God was leading me along the way. But there, there was a rebellion. They, I went to church. But I was, at going to church, I still had to receive and accept Jesus of my own. Going there is good, but what you're going to do when you get there is a question. Hearing the word is good, but what you're going to do after you receive it? So God is leading us along the way, but he has, he's leading us to the way. The way is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the way, he's the truth, and he's the light. So no matter what life has thrown at us, we're still without an excuse for serving him. Are we going to remain enemy of God? hear the gospel time and time again are we going to be a follower of Christ that's the right. that, question and it never changes mm -hmm. God is loving us he loves we can't none of us can say God doesn't we can, the problem is we base our love on we best base God's love for us on our circumstance mm -hmm. and and God doesn't deserve that mm -hmm. there's nothing you're going through that he can't handle or take care of but if life is going our way, God is good. If life is going our way, he doesn't care. No, not so. God so loved. The scripture said God so loved. Jesus died when your circumstance, when your circumstance could have been good. Whether your circumstances are good or bad, Jesus paid the price for our sin. And because we were born in sin, the wage of the sin is death. At any time during my, before I came to Christ, Jesus could have came back. Where would I have been? I would have been, pastor said it right, hell bound, with no excuse. I could say, um, this wasn't fair to me, that wasn't fair, this hurt me, I didn't like this, they did this to me that day, without an excuse. Because out of all that, this wasn't fair, but Jesus still died for my sin. That's right. This wasn't fair, but Jesus still died for my sin. The wages of sin is death. Yes. And nobody knows when Jesus is coming. I'm, thank, I'm thanking God that our, our Sunday school lessons are staying right there. Because there has to be an urgency. Because the Bible says, I'm coming back. And no man, only God the Father knows when Jesus is coming back. And he tells us to be ready. Not getting ready. Yeah. Not getting ready to go to church. Not getting ready to pick up my Bible. Not getting ready to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. You have to have already accepted him. Yeah. Yeah. He says, be ready. He doesn't say, get ready. So when you think back at all this time where we rebelled, just like the Israelites, and I thank God because they were his chosen people and 600,000 left. And when they got to the promised land, only two of the originals made it. Out of 600,000, only two of the ones that left, 40 years prior, made it. That's why we have to receive God's word, give God's word with urgency, receive it with urgency. What? He gives us his word, what? We read his word with the intent to obey it. 
We hear his word and God expects us to obey what we hear, receive what we hear. So what, God is a leader. You're not here by accident today. This is a plan. God ordained, like Pastor said, God ordained this day. Yeah, that's right. Just like when we pray, we expect God, when we pray, we expect God to answer our prayer today. Well, God expects you to respond today. He expects you to say yes today because we don't know what's going to happen this afternoon. If he came back this afternoon, would everybody in here go to heaven? Would we all go? There's no reason not for all of us to go. If, if Jesus came back this afternoon, why would we not all of us go? We're receiving it. We're getting his word. We're getting the gospel. And God is not waiting for you. Jesus already died for our sins. He's not waiting for you to get yourself together. He's waiting for just come and repent. Repent of your sins. Accept Jesus as Lord and say, because we don't know. I, I, I saw the news yesterday. A five-year-old kid died Friday. Got hit by five years old. That's not fair. Only God knows. But we all have to be ready. Nobody knows the day at a time. And only God knows. Just like he knows the hairs on our head, he knows our days. That's why we preach this gospel with urgency. Because we don't know when he's coming back. And we, we, and we don't want anybody to be lost because we failed to not share the gospel like yeah, we were told right. to share. Right. We, this is, it's urgent times. And the time of our salvation is nearer than we think. The Bible says it's time for us what? To wake up out of our sleep. But today saying he has loved us along the way. None of us can say God doesn't love us. We're, there's no excuse. You can't say God doesn't love you. Because Jesus died for your sins. That's right. And think about what God did. No giver in the history of in the history of humankind, mankind, no giver has paid the price what God paid through, through his son, Jesus. It cost him his son. Our sin cost him his son that we can be redeemed back onto him. And no recipient has deserved less deserved. Jesus was completely innocent. Jesus had done no wrong. Jesus had never sinned, but yet still he died for us. That we can be in right relationship with God. And, 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 we, and we look at it and we say, I, I, I'll come tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised to us. The next hour is not promised to us. He has loved us along the way to get us to here, to death. And what's our response today? We should have that same urgency like when we pray and we, if we get on our knees and pray and we expect God to do whatever he wants, whatever we're asking him to do, just like we expect God to do that today, he expects us to do something today. That's right. Because yes. the scripture says, on the day that you hear my voice, hard not to heart. Yeah, that's right. Today. And I go all the way back. I'm talking about my lifetime. Because I heard the gospel. I, I can't even count how many times I heard the gospel. But yes, still, he gave me another day. Yeah. And he said, and loving us along the way is these evangelists and, and these preachers that share the gospel. That's his love. I love you enough to give you the gospel one more time. Yeah, my God. That you will come. I love you enough to give you. I know you. I know where you were last night. I know what you did last night. I know what you're thinking now. If I give you the gospel <laughs> one more time. Yeah. That's what he does. And he's not saying, come, get yourself together and come. He's saying, come today. Because yeah. Yeah, if he came today, it doesn't matter if you accept Jesus 40 years ago, 60 years ago, or a minute ago. That's right. It doesn't matter. It don't matter. Just accept Jesus. And look, repent of your sins. That's what he's asking. He has led us along the way. And I, I, when I look at the Israelites, it reminded me of myself. It, it only takes three minutes to accept, it takes, it's three minutes to accept Jesus as Lord. It's less than that. But what should have took 11 days took 40 years. I heard the gospel so many times. I heard the gospel when I was 10. I heard it when I was 7. I heard it when I was 5. I heard it when I was 15, 16. But I repented at 16 all the way up to 40 something. And he destroyed this stony heart I had. 
to grow up in the to grow up in the church, hear the gospel time after time, and still sit there with a stony heart. But yet still he gave me another chance. Yeah. Didn't have to. No, I didn't deserve it. I deserved death. I was a sinner. He could say, look, I gave you between 16 and 19, and you still didn't say yes, and, and done with you. Rightfully so. Because God is always right. But yet still he gives us another chance, what? To say yes. We can't say he didn't love us along the way, because no, no matter how bad our life has been, somebody came along and encouraged you. Somebody came along and shared the gospel with you. Maybe not, they, they didn't put money in your pocket or feed you, but they fed you the gospel. Because yeah. Jesus is not coming back until all have heard. But I promise you, he's coming back. And when he comes back, he'll take you all this, all this crookedness and evilness. He'll take care of that. So whatever wasn't fair, God, Jesus will write that what wasn't fair. Put it all in his hands. You just follow, accept and follow him. He's leading you along the way to lead That's you right. to the way. Right. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Right. Salvation only comes through Jesus. That's right. Why miss out? Because we, we, we're trying to accomplish things here. To accomplish whatever your list is and miss Jesus, you live for nothing. You missed it. It's nothing wrong with having plans, but the greatest plan is salvation. There's nothing wrong with having plans for your life, but let us start with the plan of salvation. Because if you want to be the best you can be, only through God can you, because he created you. He only, he knows, he made you. I want to be the best husband I can be. And I can't do it without Jesus. I want to be the best father I can be. I can't do it without Jesus. I want to be the best elder I can be. I can't do it without Jesus. Right. Whatever I want to be, I can't do it without Jesus. That's right. And I was sitting there, and we, we talk about, the scripture we talk about, and he'll even give you the desires of your heart. This love God has shared with me, and I had to say, Jesus, you are the desire of my heart. And I have him. As I've tasted God's love and he's revealed himself to me, all I want is what he wants. That's right. And I, I live for what he wants. I, I live for him. Mm -hmm. I proudly say that. He is my life. Yeah, that's right. My will, his will is my will. My will. Mm -hmm. Everything I thought I used to want. The things I thought made me happy. Because God is true. When we talk about unspeakable joy, it's only through Jesus. Joy unspeakable. Peace that passes all understanding. That's all found in him. And we spend years and years trying, trying to fill this void that only God can fill. Yeah, that's right. We try and drink it away, whatever. We try and party it away. We try and play sports and get away. Whatever we do, to, there's a void that only God can fill. I always thought I wanted to be this great baseball player and make a lot of money. Money can't fill it. Even if I made it to the major league, that money, that money can't buy salvation. That money can't buy peace. It can buy the best medicine, but only God got to let the medicine work. So you, you see all these people that look like they have it all, but if Jesus is missing, they have nothing. That's right. When it's all said and done, it's not, it's not going to put them in any place. You're only going one or two places, heaven or hell. That's right. That's it. And your money can't buy salvation. But just like along this journey, let's, let us, God, God is he's loving us along the way. Let's not be distracted because he said, well, be transformed in the spirit of our mind. The spirit of our mind. Walk in newness of life. And I thank God for these children because God is already what? What? They're different. Yeah. They're different. And I know they feel different because God, 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 God has, he's, he's doing, he's, he's 
doing something special in him right now that he's going to continue to do till he comes back. And they know they're different. And I encourage all, just, just like to, to our children today, I sat where you were. I was, a, I, I was the same little, I was a, in fifth grade at one time. I was in kindergarten at one time. I'm at, back in my day, it wasn't cool to wear glasses. So I had, just for the fact I wore glasses, and then going to church all the time, I had the hair, but where am I today? God spared my life to allow me to make it back. I got, we got teased for going to church. We got teased. But where are we now? Where do I find myself now? In no place I would I rather be, sharing the gospel, encouraging, just, I, been, I sat where you sat. No, no one I didn't, I just didn't know how and why. God has chosen, you're, you're chosen. You choose to be chosen. God is, out of all these children, he, he chose these children here. And we pray for you daily. Yeah, we sure do. Stand up and be different. Yeah. Be different. And I, I, I love it because back, back when I was your age, we, we didn't pick up the phone and, and we call our pastor. I love it. That's, that's a beautiful thing. Because that's why she's here. That we would learn and, and, and learn and know that God has a special anointing on your life. And God's going to use you to do some great things that he will get all the glory. He has set you aside. It's something, yes, it's something very different about you. It's something very special about you. Walk in it. Yes. Walk yes. in it. Yes. You be proud of it because we're proud of you. Yes. We all sat there. We're all adults. They, 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 God brought them through. Our children sat in the same place they sit. What, to be here? Doing this, what, till he comes back? And, and, and he's. And whatever flaws we have, God's going to continue to perfect us, but yet still we have to hate sin. We got to hate it. We got to hate that sin because God hates it. What? The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. We would do what we, in His grace and His mercy, that, that's what we're talking about. We didn't get what we deserve. And we got something that we didn't earn to get. That's right. Grace is, we've done nothing to earn grace. We can't earn it. And what we should have got what was death because we sinners, we didn't get. That's mercy. That's right. But yes, yeah, so he gives a time, day after day, he gives us another day, what? To come to him. Yeah. Serve him. And be the people, the person he created us to be. Yeah. The word is going to go forth. God's will is going to be done. The problem is we'll be, we'll, he's, he's allowing us to, to participate in what he's doing. Because it's going to get done. And he's loving us along the way. But he's, he's loving us and leading us to the way. And it's, it's to Jesus. And he's leading that we, people ought to want to be a follower of Christ by looking at us. By listening at the words we speak and how we live and how we treat each other. How they know that we are his disciples, how we treat each other. Mm -hmm. Sharing the gospel with others. He didn't save us to go to heaven by ourselves. It's not over after we get saved, it just starts. It just, just, now it's another, another witness. But think, God loved us so that he allows us to participate in what he's doing. He, he, take part in what I'm doing. There's a love like no other. The more and more I, 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 I'm trying to pay him back for loving me so and I can't. And I just love him more and more the next day and I'm trying to pay him back. I can't pay him back. So but all I can have is my life. That's the most I can give to you my life. And he's worthy. I, we go, I go through circumstances where things aren't great but it can't, the circumstances can't hinder my praise because he's been that good. Been broke before, but it, being broke can't hinder my praise. That's right. Amen. Been homeless before, but being homeless can't hinder my praise. That's right. What you see now, there was a road here. Mm -hmm. 
I know it's not like I know it's like not to have nothing to eat. I know what it's like to have lights turned out on you. I know what it's like to be homeless. But he saw me. He didn't leave me. He kept me. And he is worthy. He's worthy of praise. And I, I and I, in this journey, I've learned to praise him, good or bad. He's always good. I can see his goodness in everything. That's how great and awesome God is. When you when you you allow Him to reveal Himself to you, He's always good. Yeah. It's just our perception of what we're going through. We we take our perception of our circumstances, and we let that determine whether God, God is good, always good. He's always worthy of praise. Because if I can praise Him with no money in my wallet, how much more can I praise Him with money in my wallet? Because I know He the one that put it there. If I can praise him when I had nothing, nothing to eat, how much can I say grace when I got something to eat? That's right. He's a provider of all that we have need of. But he, has a, he, he continues to love us along the way, to lead us to the way. Now we have to, when we, he's leading us to Jesus. What are we going to do? Are we going to accept him? Are we going to give the excuses like the, the other ones in the Bible? One said, I have oxen. I just got land. God has squashed all our excuses. He squashed our excuses. He said, while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. While we were his enemies, Jesus died for us. He did that while we were his enemies. So how much more? How much more would he do for us as his children? That's right. If he, was, if he would let his son die for us while we are his enemies, what do you think he's going to do as his child? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I know people go through stuff, and we've been through life, and people probably told you, you don't have what it takes. No, I don't have what it takes, but I got who it takes. Yeah. And that's all you need. If God be for you, who can stand against you? Who can be against you? I've heard that so many times. You, you you don't have what it takes. I have who it takes, and that's all that matters. And we have to live this life to please God. That's right. You live this life to please is somebody. You can somebody's always going to come and tell you you didn't do enough. Right, yeah. And that person don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. That's right. But we're gonna have to get an answer. Don't don't don't. Don't give him an excuse today. I got something to do. God has something to do also. He has the right to wrong. Judgment is his business. God has some stuff he got to take care of too. But he don't want you to miss. He said, God, this loving God we serve, and I'm about to close because he says, this loving God we serve has no pleasure in the destruction of the wicked. That's Think right. about that. That's right. Even the ones that are wicked, that already that God knows are going to reject them all within, He don't even have pleasure in their destruction. But God today has loved us along the way to lead us to the way. What will be your answer today? What will be your answer? He has brought us all through so much. When we think we couldn't make it, we made it. He has brought us up today. And I know life has been hard. We've been through some stuff. And what? He has kept us. I mean some stuff. I make no light of what. I don't make light of anything anybody in here has went through. But we're here today. And he has brought us along the way to lead us to the way. Today. You know, all it takes is a simple yes. Repent of your sins. And I'm so glad he got, got me there to think. I've heard the gospel, I could say honest, maybe a million times. Mm -hmm. And it still took me probably almost 40 years to say yes. And he spared me to say yes. Me and Pastor was in situations where we had a gun pointed at her. She carrying Elder A.V., gun pointed at her. That's right. She and I see you. Deacon Ness got three hours to live. Where are we today? 
We owe them yes. And we, and we owe him yes simply because he is God. And we owe him yes because what? While we were enemies of God, what? Jesus died for us. But I look around this room, I, I, I see no, so many reasons to, to give him the glory. Yeah. I don't know everything y'all been through, but I know it ain't been easy all the time. I know it's been rough. And, and above all, God knows what you've been through, what you've gone. God knows all about it. But why we were his enemies, he's, Jesus still died for us. All, all it takes is a yes. Repent of your sins. He's leading it as what? To Jesus. Because you know, we're living in a time where everybody, everybody's not going to go to heaven. That, and we, we can't continue to allow people to think that. That's right. And that's what we're doing. You can, you, can, you can sell a kilo of cocaine, get shot, but when they bury you, you we're we going to see you. No, you don't get to do that. That's not true. All right, you can lie and not accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. You don't get to go to heaven. You can be envious. I'm, I'm going to put it this way. You can be envious of, of your neighbor's house and miss heaven. You can be a backbiter That's right. and miss heaven. That's right. You can rob God in your tithes and offerings and miss heaven. You can be a thief and miss heaven. Don't you thief and don't kill nobody and go to heaven. You can be squeaky clean and and and, and say I never did nothing. You gonna miss heaven because all have sin. <laughs> No, cause you got some say they ain't, some say they never did nothing. Cause you have those. You have you have some that have done the worst, and you have some that have done the least. And anyone that say they haven't sinned is a liar. So you miss heaven. You ain't do none of the above, but you say you haven't sinned. You miss heaven. How easy it is. Jesus is calling to just simply say, repent of your sin. Yeah. Jesus started his ministry, and I'm almost done. He said, repent and believe the gospel. Yeah, that's, that's what he said that's when he started his ministry. So God has what? He, I, I say he, lo he, he loved us along with because at any given time, he could have said, that, that's it. It's over. I'm not waking you up today. At any given time. Wow. Would it be right? Because he can yeah, do it every right. one. Absolutely. He would be right. But yet still, he gives us another chance to hear the gospel. That what? We, we would repent of our sins, accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, and therefore be witnesses. Children of God, no longer enemy. Because it's either enemy or fool. That's right. Either you, and we talked about earlier. Do you, you want to live this whole life being his creation? When you can be his child? Because creation puts you, you, you with the grass and the trees, yeah, and you're right. in that category. That's right. You live just, but you were just a grass and a tree that could talk. <laughs> you end up being his creation. You put, puts you in that category That's when right. you can be his child, a servant, yeah. up there spending the rest of your life with him, seeing his face, seeing him as he is, just to be in his presence for the rest of your life. But he has loved us along the way to lead us to the way. Don't miss Jesus today. Don't miss him. He's, God squashed through Jesus. He squashed all. When Jesus took our sins and cross, he squashed every excuse. He squashed every excuse. Because did, Jesus did it while we were enemies of God, while we were sinners. We wasn't even thinking about coming to God. Some still not. But he still loved you enough to die for you in your sins. So let him love you all the way to the way. He's, he loves you. He allowed his son to die for your sins. But let him love you till you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then once you do that, you begin to taste and see what real love is all about. God bless you and I love you.